I don't know what happened there. What do you mean? A giant. I love it. It's very <laughs> epic. I don't. Ah, there we go. That was <sighs> part of the opening and then countdown and then the opening again. Very epic. But we're here now, and that's the important thing, right? We are here now. There's the, well, there's, we've got that fabulous new opening that Buddy put together all by himself, I'm told. Um, <laughs> And in fact, that's why he's not here this week because he had to, you know, take a nap after working so hard on that graphic. But it's okay because this week we're here with we got Mike. Mike check. Mike check one one. <laughs> Mike check. Uh yeah, Mike check too. Yeah, okay. sibilance. Yeah, sibilance. So tonight, if you hopefully, well, now it's getting an echo. It was, it was, you know, this is what live is all about, right? We, we, that's why we go live. I know. Yeah. Look it's at that like, setup. You know, Mike's got, though. He's got everything. He's got the desk. He's got the mic. That's everything. I know. I know. I've got the. I got a, a nice couch and a TV. Mike's to watch got a mic. The last of Us too. Nice. You don't have that. I can't, what are you sitting? I can't watch it right you now. You know, you're sitting in your closet. All right. I so what? let me think. Little Mike, Big Mike, uh, LA Mike, New York Mike. <laughs> I'll I'll uh I'll volunteer my last name as everyone everyone always just calls me okay. Dolce and I'm cool with it. Dolce and Fazola, we got it. So hey, Dolce, I understand you write a book, do a book, right? Am I wrong? Uh, I write I write many right now. Actually, it's been a very busy last. But this few one's years, apparently so. about a horse, maybe or a. Right, I did what now? The, the, I'm making a joke. It's a very bad joke. The sire. <laughs> that's about yes. horse animal husbandry, right? That's it. No, clearly, clearly, yes. I love that. I love the research. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I know: that the sire has been. You have been writing. You created the character. Yes. And you have been putting the book out fairly consistently for 17 years. That is longer than Pasolo has been alive. That's impressive. Yeah. I, that's well, a, you know what? I want to say I wish it was a little more consistently because at this pace, it's less than one per year. But that's um, but that's OK, because still, we we have I, I have it, what's so super exciting about it. And this is my only plug for, for, for the book is uh, we are back in stores as of June 28th of 2023. Um, so I'm very excited. So we'll be doing more of these books, which is, uh, which is what I broke into the industry to do in the very first place. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Nice. So how now I know you've been doing the book for 17 years, but I've never known a creator who's, done his own thing that just sat down one day and thought of it full of cloth. So my question to you, Dolce, is yes. when, you know, the, you know, 18 years ago? No, I mean, so I, I, like I created a... the character in, uh, in sixth grade. So, uh, yeah, like 20 years ago, clearly. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, no, uh -huh. but when I was in sixth grade and, um, and I would make these, I would take the little, you know, I would do whatever every kid used to do back then. I don't know if they do it anymore, but they do it now. They used to do it then was fold the pap papers together, staple them, make little comic books. And um, it was, I mean, when I, I was very prolific in sixth grade, I got to be honest. I think I did like 18 issues in one year. Um, <laughs> there you go. You know, I was really into it. But, um, but the cool part was, is that over time, I just never stopped doing that. And all the way and here we are up. 17 years later. Well, you know, it's funny. All the way through college, I ended up with like 100 issues of uh, it was called Street Fighter back then, which is why, you know, I changed the name because you know I think that name was taken. But, uh, nice, but I ended nice. up with 100 issues of that. And um, and through high school and things like that, you know, all of a sudden the stories stopped being like copies of Stanley and, you know, Jack Kirby or Stanley and Steve Ditko. Um, you know, comic book origins. And it started, you know, I think right around issue 40 or 45, I'm like, I got to come up with a better origin for this guy. And and so I kind of like retooled him and reshaped him. And I introduced all these other characters. And I mean, collectively, I think I've done actually like, I think I might've done like 200 of those little comics. 
and um, uh, with different series. I, I went through my Liefeld phase. There was a lot of a lot of shoulder pads and grinning, you know, like, you know, not gritting teeth, grueling teeth, whatever you want to no, call no it. Teeth. Gritting teeth, gritting teeth, teeth gritting, <laughs> teeth grinding. Um, but it's cool. And then eventually, you know, again, in high school, when I started getting older and my brain, I guess, started developing, um, I started, you know, thinking more closely about it. And by the end of college, I was like, oh, you know what? I actually have a really good story here. Um, now I just have to get to this really good story somehow. Um, and I started all over again and, uh, and, uh, the sire was born. So, yeah, that was basically my question. How do you keep going after 17 years? But it sounds like every so often you sort of stop, take stock of what you've done, you know, what you've got, and then kind of you too reboot. You know, I've barely scratched the surface. That's the thing. I really, um, the story itself, so the story is about a superhero He's forced by his own costume to fight evil. It's kind of like having a spider sense, but instead of warning of danger, actually puts him in danger. And um, so he wakes up with his costume. He has no idea how he got it. Uh, doesn't know why it makes him do what it does. And the worst part is he can't get it off. And uh, it, it basically just pulls him into all these different directions uh, against these other superpowered uh, beings who are also, you know, just newly, you know, gifted with abilities. And they all want to fight him. And and it's not just one of those like passive things. They all in their head are drawn to him and they're drawn to this big uh, battle that happens. And so that kind of spans the first couple of um, chapters of the book. And then you kind of start to you start to unravel, you know, where the power came from and why it's making him do what it does. And we're up to actually volume three of the trades now. So I, I literally just finished issue 13. I got it out to all my Kickstarter backers. Um, and at that point, the sires basically thinks he knows the purpose behind everything. Uh, and then at the very end, uh, spoiler, uh, he's going to learn that he doesn't even know um, that he is that he might be the reason that Earth is going to uh, be no more or be not as it is. Anymore. What? So, that's yeah. <gasps> that's all right. Easy. Everybody watching, don't tell. So the so storyline <laughs> wise, the way you sort of mm -hmm. keep, keep it fresh is that you seem to like reboot and go back to yourself. But just I mean, you know, how do you how do you stay in, is that the same reason that there, or that's the same like how do you stay enthused about something that you created in sixth grade i mean that's a while ago yeah how do you, you know do you do you just keep looking at it with fresh eyes or do you you know because it's you know, like an old friend you, you just, just keep going yeah no it's an old friend you just you know it's actually um so it's funny i i've done um i've done a lot of other stuff since since breaking in with sire i did some stuff at image comics uh created a comic called descendant done some stuff at Zenoscope, but created a comic called Mainstream. Um, and now I do I do a bunch of stuff with a, a company called Rogue Matter. Um, and it's fun to create new stuff. And it is. It's kind of like having, you know, like a new girl, you know, you get to you get to, oh, you know, try this one out. Uh, really? And, really? And see the difference. Well, it's nice. It's, you know, it's like dating around a little bit. Right. Uh, but you always kind of really? come back to your first love, you know, and that's and that's the way I look at Sire. I look oh, yeah. at it as assuming she'll still have you. Maybe let's do the <laughs> analogy of like. It's like a new outfit, maybe a new pair of shoes, maybe, maybe like there, there you a go. New, it could be yeah. maybe a new robe, right? The solo, like well, getting yeah. a new robe. So you try on, right? a new like robe. When, you, when you date somebody new, they they offer new like adventures for you to go on, right? So that was my that was where uh -huh. I was going with that. You go, you know, go somewhere new. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's a good analogy. But then I you, thought it was okay. But, I didn't think it was offensive. <laughs> No, it's not offensive. It's just funny because, like, but then you come back to your wife after you're done dating the new folks. Is that basically the logic? Does that like work the Amish, for you? Right? Maybe it's that like the Amish, right? They go out, they go out uh, and see the world, and then they come That's back. Right on the Rumspringa. Um, yeah, Rumspringa. Yeah. Uh, but no, so, you know, it's so it's, it's funny. I mean, I got offered, I got someone offered to buy, I twice actually offered to buy the sire, and I'm like, nah, it's like I'm good. Like, I don't ever want anybody else to own the publishing rights. I don't want anybody else to tell me what I can or can't do with it. It's the one thing where I can just, I, I as much as I have a storyline that I'm trying to work toward and I do have a goal to get there, um, it's fun because I can kind of just be like, hey, what do I feel like doing right now? Oh, yeah, I kind of feel like throwing this in there now. And, and I can just do it because that's it's my it's it's my indie creation that uh, built up, you know, it built up a, a, a modest fan base and they just keep buying it and I'll keep making it regardless you know it's just it's fun yep sounds right yeah but but sort of what did you expect did, all right wait mike pasola's got a question 
I, I was just yeah. going to say, when you do the, the issues, is it just like, you know, you're putting out a 22 pager or do you do a trade that it's, you know, full? So I, I made the terrible mistake, Mike, of, of last time around. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a whole trade at once and I'm going to do like three issues. Um, and no I'm going to release does it. That. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, so Pat Shan, you a friend of mine, he, he does, um, he does a, a book called Destiny, 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 New York, if I could talk tonight. Um, and he actually, um, he does that. He does trades, which is crazy. And I'm like, wow, that's a really great idea though. But then you get three books right there. That's great. Like I'm going to do that. And I, so in the, um, in the height of COVID, I, no, yeah, maybe not the height, maybe January, 2021, I was like, I'm going to do it. And I put the Kickstarter out, uh, and I just finished it, Mike, I just <laughs> finished it. So, um, so no, I will not do that ever again. I will do the single issues, um, you know, as they come. <laughs> And what was your expectation? You're saying you don't want to sell off publishing rights, but like, you know, live action so, movie, animation series, video game. So, you know, licensing is different. I would definitely be down for licensing and optioning and all that fun stuff, but never, never selling the rights. So um, there was one publishing company many, many years ago. It was like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I need to own 51% of it in order to sell it. And I was like, eh, now nah, I'm good. Like, I'm good. And then, um, you know, I've had other other people be like, I love it. I want to bring it in. Let's bring it in. I want to buy it. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now it's actually we're, we're publishing through a company called Dren Productions. Uh, it's run by a good friend mm -hmm. of mine uh, from college. Uh, I own the rights to it. It's my book. Um, we actually uh, James Masia, who's the publisher of Dren Productions. Uh, we, we do all our conventions together and we just he just basically said it just makes sense to do everything under one umbrella. And uh, basically, because we're friends and we have no formal business <laughs> contract together, we just it's like, it's great. Yeah. Put it under the Dren label and let's, you know, I help build up his company. And, and at the same time, um, you know, he, he's he's got a deal with Diamond. So now we're, you know, back in book, you know, back in comic book stores. So it works out great. So, so you mentioned. Yeah. No, I was going to say just to give you the, the 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 expectations of it, though. Right. And I think it's a funny question. And this is this is something that's really good for lots of folks who are into want to get into self-publishing. Um, it, it the sire failed many times over before it actually has some modicum of success, which even that, you know, I, I will say is a modest success. Right. Um, I, I actually originally had wrote and drew the whole thing. Um, I went to, you know, I went to art school. That was what I was going to do. So my expectation was this is how I was going to live. I was going to live off of this book. Um, I renamed him before naming him the sire, I renamed him Crossfire. I put out, I spent my entire senior year of college putting this book together down to uh, creating a font. I actually created a font based off of my own handwriting. Nice. And because um, I was like that, I, you know, I was in college. Like what I got, like, college is amazing, right? Because you just have all the time in the world. Like, you know, like I was either in the bar or the computer lab. There was, there was, that was it. Those were like the two places I was at. Um, class. And I was like, this Did is going to be Did you go to great. class every so often? Did you go to class? I was already in the change. I was already in the lab there. I, you know, like computer. You know, class was in the okay. computer lab, so I was there. I was, you know, my 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 um my teacher one time was just like I, I I was there so much and I was doing so much. They would just be like, just go ask Mike. You have a question? Go ask Mike. He's there already. Like, and so I was. It was it was kind of comical, but um when I when I when I got out, I immediately sent out the first issue to publishers. And it got it got rejected. And they said, "All right, well, I don't need publishers. I'll do. I'll publish it myself, and uh, I'll take my graduation." You've got the stapler. I'll... You've got all the paper. There you right. go. Right, right. And um, and then the distributor said, "No, it's 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 not good enough." And they they would give you a list, right? They'd actually give you a like a checklist when you submit as to why they would reject you, which is actually very super helpful. And they just said art wasn't professional enough. And um, a friend of the show, Darren Sanchez, um, who when we were I was working at Wizard, that was my first job out of college. Uh, because Crossfire didn't go anywhere. So I was like, oh, I guess I got to get a job. <laughs> and um, Darren said to me, he says, well, what are you trying to do? You trying to do an art project or are you trying to tell a story? I said, I'm trying to tell a story. He said, well, you better get an, a real artist then. And I said, all right, it's a good point. And um, and that was the the lesson I learned. And um, and then, you know, I rebooted it in 2005 with uh, an artist called Daniel Leister, uh, who went on to do some stuff with Image does, uh, and Zenoscope. He's done Hack Slash. Um, and he was great. And, and together we, we broke through and got into the distributor magazine in 2006. So that was, uh, that was the first lesson of failure. Uh, the second lesson was 
just because you can make one issue of a comic, you should probably make two or three issues of a comic before you decide to bring it out into the world because man, those months they 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 close quick. Like it took us a good 18 months to put the first issue together, and then suddenly we needed we had a month to put the next one together. Um, and and then we had another month to put the next one together. Uh, and I and I quickly realized I I really should have taken my time. <laughs> I was I was so excited to get in that I just was like, man, you know, life lessons, you know. So you had mentioned earlier that you know you've got your you've got your following and you've got your um, your folks that you know are the fans that are going to do this. How did you how did you build that up? Did you just go to cons? Did you yeah send out free samples? Of- um, it, it was a lot. It was so early on was great. Again, um, I, I was at Wizard right before the book came out. And so I got a lot of free advertising through there, which was actually kind of cool. Like uh, for anybody who doesn't remember what Wizard Magazine was, because I mean, it's amazing. That's it's been gone for I mean, yeah, I know it's been gone for like 12 years now, I think. Right. I mean, the actual magazine, I think, closed up shop in what, 2010, 2011. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, it was just the conventions. Remember, the conventions stayed on, but the magazine yeah. itself, I mean, hasn't been around in, a, in, in I'd say probably ten years, right? Let, let's just yeah. we'll, we'll say at a least. fair estimate of that. Um, so the advertising helped, and then conventions. Yeah, I was at conventions constantly. So um, back then, though, you know, it's a, it's a, it's another thing too. I always think back. I'm like, man, if I was in college, um, like even the last like five years, let's say, let's say pre COVID, just just you know, so we don't have any any interruption. Right. And I was, and I was, um, in college and I was able to like utilize all the technology that we have today to advertise this kind of stuff. Um, but then just to have the amount of conventions that they had, they have now, I mean, back in 06, I mean, you would, uh, you would basically do what six shows a year and that's all they would have aside from like doing maybe like a hotel somewhere, you know, like, like when those little small hotel yeah. shows they used to have. Um, but now you could literally, uh, you know, and again, this is, we're just talking pre-COVID. I mean, things are getting back, but still not back yet. Um, you could do a show every week if you wanted to, you know? Uh, there's there's a creator called Dirk Manning, and that's what he did. He literally went to a show. He went to a show every single month, like, and maybe every two weeks, and um, and built up an audience. So, so yeah, just, I mean, doing conventions is 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 a big thing. Um, there's a uh, There's an online course you can take that I took as well too. It's called comics launch, uh, Tyler James. Uh, he is with comics tribe. He does an amazing, uh, job teaching you how to using today's technology, build up an audience, which is, um, Mm. it's through your email newsletter. It's, it's like, it's called the sales funnel. It actually works across multiple industries, but he honed everything and and created a course based just strictly on comics. So I got to give a shout out to him. Um, and yeah, I think it's just, it's just, prolong just keep going out there and keep doing stuff and and that's eventually it kind of it kind of takes effect i I know there was a seth rogan quote one time and he said um he said i was the worst kid in my karate class and eventually i was the best adult in my kid karate class (laughs) (laughs) and he's he's like yeah i i mean i have i was just bigger and stronger than everybody at that point i was 17 but i was the one that stuck with it and so clearly i just became the best one in the class because you know, that's it. Do, I was 17. You know and they karate? Were... What's that? Is that part of the thing? Like learn karate? No, I'm kidding. Yes. Do you have to learn karate? <laughs> yes. If you learn karate, you will, uh, you will, you will achieve okay. your goals. Yeah. You'll make it in the comics industry. But seriously, yeah. So seriously, we've got a lot of folks here who are very interested in the, mm-hmm. in the craft of it, uh, in the craft of comic book making. They, you know, they're not just fans. We're all fans. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But they also want to do their own. So, what would your advice be? Would it be to like do the launch? Would it be to uh, learn from failure? What do you think? Um, I mean, there's so many lessons, really, right? I mean, I think I think the number one thing is just to do it, right? I mean, look, you're not gonna you're not gonna be perfect uh, with whatever you do. You're always gonna look back and and say there's there's like there's maybe two issues I've written, and I've written maybe. I mean, how many comics have I written? Maybe 50 comics at this point. And that's not a lot. I got to be honest with you. I probably, you know, 50 professional comics, right? And that's not, again, terribly a lot. I'd like it to be much more than that. But let's say I've written about 50. And there's maybe two issues I can look back and go, that was a perfect issue. Um, which I think is actually pretty good. If I can, if you can, if you can do that, then, then you're, then you're, then you're ahead of the game. I think in that, in that sense, you're always going to, you're always going to stumble across 
you know, something, I mean, Mike, in your writing, I mean, I'm sure you, you look back at things you've written and you're just like, Oh God, Oh man, I wish I would have done that different. Oh, like that joke didn't quite land or, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that you're always going to. Oh yeah. Lots Is of that things why there's only three, three and he's not five. Of. That's right. See? <laughs> that's right. That's, that's yep. The other two is like better. Robe. <laughs> uh, robe the robe but i might do a comic called the robe and that's going to be it's going to be the big hit i love well you know what that's the beauty of it too right i, I think in our industry there's really there's like an athlete what an athlete has a window of like 10 years right like you get yeah. 10 years to really you know be great we have 40 years god robe, will, 50 years the robe has right? a has a window of 10 years well that's true <laughs> the robe is eternal yeah. The other, the other thing, though, I would say, honestly, though, is and, and, and then going back to what we were just talking about, like, do it, though. Right. Like, you got to do it. And, and I don't mean that to be facetious, yeah. but literally there's been ideas I've had and I'm, and, I, and they've been in they're in a creative. I have like a folder full of creative ideas. And I'm like, oh, damn, I had that idea. Shoot. That was, you know, this guy did it first, like or that girl did it first. And it's like, well, you know, if you don't put your stuff out there, someone's going to eventually write your story and it's going to write the story that you wanted to tell. So. Um, even if it doesn't turn out great, at least you could say you did it. And there was a show on Amazon called the undone and it was a time travel story. And I actually came out with a comic three years earlier called undone. It was a time travel story. And so at least I could sit there and say, like, I did it before that, before Amazon yeah. stole my idea. So did you, yeah, I was going to say, did you send it to Amazon <laughs> and then suddenly it's on the, air? I wish I, you know, I wish I did. I could, then I could be very, uh, very wealthy, uh, <laughs> um, creator. <laughs> so. I think you've sort of touched on this, but we always like to ask, what's the best piece of advice you've gotten and what do you wish somebody had told you earlier? And it sounds like there's a lot of, you know, don't be, you know, don't overthink yourself, do it anyway. It may not be perfect, but do it anyway. If you're not the best at this, you know, hire somebody or have somebody help you. And then, yeah, no, that, you know, go, that is go and revisit. That is probably, yeah. I, well, again, I think if, if people had told me, don't release a book, don't release an issue until you have three issues done, uh, that would have been great because, um, you know, it was, I, again, I think the industry is, the industry I grew up loving and, my, and Mike loved, um, uh, you know, we, we all kind of grew up, and Ruth, you grew up with it as well, too, with, with, with you know, being a wizard and everything like that. It doesn't quite exist the same way it did, it does now. Um, I don't know if, if there's a, you know, like a monthly publishing grind doesn't really happen, but back then I wish I would have been told do three issues before you put out the first one, because it's going to just sneak up on you. Um, and yeah. the other thing I would, I would sit there and say is, um, the best piece of advice. Yeah. Is, is obviously look, figure out what you're great at, um, figure out what you're trying to accomplish, figure out what your actual goal is, because you know, my goal was to cut costs down when I was like, well, I might as well be the artist, too, because then I don't have to spend as much, you know, on an artist and this and that. And I, my, my art's fine. I'm sure it's fine. But, you know, deep down, I, you know, I, I knew I was getting away with something if, if it if it didn't, you know, uh, if it somehow passed the mustard, I knew I was getting away with it. It wasn't my art wasn't what I wanted the the book to look like. And, and I always hope that it has a professional quality to it. So those those two are, are big like things. But again, I think the biggest piece of advice I can give like today is you need to be consistent with putting books out and putting work out. Because if you do not, then you are, then this is a hobby. It's not a, it's not a profession. Um, and people will not consider you like when someone, like I read in a screenwriting book once and they're like the number one rule when you're a screenwriter is if someone asks you what you do, you tell them you're a screenwriter. And I thought that was a weird rule. I didn't quite understand it. And I read the explanation for it, but I still didn't kind of grasp it. I was like 19 years old and I was like, I don't understand what that means. But what it meant was, is that um, you are, you are every day you are making comics. So if you are making comics, then you are a professional comic book artist. You're a professional comic book writer. You're a professional in comics. And it's the mentality of I am making comics. So that no matter what, you are putting stuff out because the worst thing you can do is kind of, again, sit back and wait for that perfect opportunity to come along um or wait for that perfect like moment to come along and you just don't put work out like you got to put work out that's the number one piece of advice i can give anybody so even if it's not the greatest thing you've ever done it doesn't matter it will you'll six months from now if you're an artist your work's gonna get better every six months if you're a writer you're gonna get better every you know three to six months to just keep writing um just keep putting stuff out and people again 
with today's technology, with today, with social media, with, you know, TikTok and, and, you know, all these, these great outlets, um, you can actually craft your brand. You can create the image you want people to see you as. And so they'll see you as a comic book artist or a comic book writer or a comic book creator. So that would be my big, my big or advice for right now. Or robe wear. That's right. You could be a robe wear. Yes. Is that really a robe? Yeah, and that's like a fuzzy. No, this is not the robe. This is. This oh, is I was going to uh, say that is a very comfy. fuzzy but very comfortable yeah. looking sweatshirt. This is extremely comfortable Mike, and extremely warm. Mike, Mike, you know he normally he wears the robe, but every so often he you know, steps out. You know, steps out. You know, where you know, looks around, gets a new robe. You know, gets a new little something, something. Well, it, but it then he always goes back to the robe now and then. Yeah. <laughs> not often but so, so final uh so so quick hits what are you working on now you just finished up with the latest sire yes um yes i got a lot of stuff going on right now uh there's a book called plan 59 from outer space uh it's in the uh it's in stores right now actually i think the first issue just just hit the stores uh it's a three issue series uh it's based off the ed wood uh, classic movie, um, but 50 plans later, the aliens think they finally have us where they want us. Uh, so you can go check that out. I actually have to finish up. Um, oh, it's not, sorry, it's not in stores yet, but it will be in stores next month. Um, and then um, the sire, I just but wrapped up. you can up, order but... it now. Yeah, yeah. So yes, you can order plan 59, one through three. And then in next month's previews, you can order sire origins, which is the first three issues of sire collected in a brand new trade uh, with some bonus material. We're going to be putting out new trades uh, every three months uh, leading up to basically we're into volume four now at this point. So, um, and then new issues will be available in stores too, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, I work with a company called rogue matter. And so we've got a bunch of, it, it's a digital company out in LA. Um, I just released a book called time trader through them. And uh, I have a new book called uh, the roads not taken, which will be hitting their website. Eh, let's say spring. We haven't gotten a definitive launch date on that yet. And hey, next convention, upcoming convention appearances, et cetera. C2E2, yes. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I'm actually going to be hosting a panel uh, at C2E2, Woo! and we have a booth. We'll be at the Dren Productions booth, and uh, we're hosting a panel, 10 Things Not to Do When Doing a Kickstarter. <laughs> See, we're all about, we're all about failure one? here. I love it. I was going to say, did you, you, did you learn all these 10 things not yes. to do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what's the number one all right we're 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 gonna wrap this up and let you uh you know go finish watching those movies etc you were talking about what's the number <laughs> one thing not to do when having a car kickstarter because the number one thing to do is come back on comic book show and tell us all about it what's the number one thing to not do uh you'll have to come to the panel to, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I, look the number one thing honestly is don't launch without having a following and how do you get a following we'll we'll talk about that at the panel well there you go nice to see you. all right y'all um look up mr dolce at sire studios look up Inc. mike fazzolo yeah you don't have to look, look up mike fazzolo <laughs> okay just follow the rope <laughs> all right That was a that was a great